This is my 1000 watt homemade LED flashlight. It's commonly accepted that LEDs put out about 7 times more light per watt than halogen bulbs. With that being said, a halogen equivalent would draw 7000 watts. That's a lot of power, and a lot of light. My build consists of 10 100 watt LED chips in a row. Each one is attached to a large heatsink with bolts and thermal grease to help the heat transfer. Every chip has its own driver, which is just attached to the heatsink with wire. These drivers take the 12 volts from the battery and bump it up to about 35 volts for the LED. I drilled holes in all the heat sinks and mounted aluminum bars on each side to hold the array together. This also acts as a handle. Each LED has its own glass lens to make the beam width roughly 60 degrees. I attached some bent aluminum bars to hold two 8 amp hour 3S LiPo batteries running in parallel. This gives the light about 10 minutes of runtime. I was going to install cooling fans on the back of each heatsink, but I never really need to run the LED for more than a minute or two. It gets pretty hot, but it's manageable. The whole device weighs in at 10 pounds. This here is a really bright LED spotlight that can easily illuminate a mountainside from a couple hundred yards away. Here's a comparison showing it up against my 1000 watt LED. Note that for all these tests, the camera was set to manual exposure so that the exposure settings remain constant. And here is the... 1,000 watt LED. <laughs> wow, that is really bright. This here is footage shot with a GoPro Hero 4 Black on a quadcopter. You can see how the 1,000 watt LED compares to a typical street light. This is more aerial footage of my car's headlights from above. These are the typical headlights, and these are the high beams. And this is the 1,000 watt LED. and back to the headlights. Up next is a series of photographs shot on a stormy night with low cloud cover. This is without the LED, and this is with the LED. You can see how it lights up the clouds. The camera exposure settings did not change. Here is a shot of the mountainside, and with the LED. Here's the same photo, and with the LED from another angle. Here's another one lighting up the clouds. Here's some video shot with a 1 30th of a second exposure, so you can see how bright it really is without a long exposure. There's Bigfoot! Whoa! This video is just like overexposed, I can't even see anything. Fuck, dude. <laughs> Next up is a comparison with this 300 lumen LED flashlight and these two 100 watt halogen floodlights that are in my backyard. First, here's the LED zoomed all the way in. Here are the halogen floodlights, which are very bright. And next, the LED, which is just blinding. This is a Canon 6D at ISO 25000 f1.4. Shutter speed 1 30th of a second. Natural light from the clouds in the city in the background. Pay attention to the biker going across the trail in the background. He had a pretty bright light. I saw it in the parking lot and it must have been around 300 lumens. Seeing that in the distance gives a good comparison. Here's some video of the city lights and you can see that the LED just washes everything out. This shot is showing a typical well-lit room. Then I turn on the LED which is pointed at the ceiling. Just the light bouncing off the ceiling is enough to make the entire room very bright. The spec sheets for these LED chips say they put out about 9,000 lumens each. If that's the case, all 10 are putting out 90,000 lumens. That's pretty bright for a handheld light. Now this device isn't very practical for most uses because it just blinds you if you're shining it at anything closer than about 100 feet. However, I have thought of a couple cool applications I'd like to try out. One is using it for filming action sports at night, so stay tuned for future videos on stuff like that.
Also, here are links to some of my past videos of putting a smaller 100 watt LED bar on a quadcopter. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.